Our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. If our life in Christ means anything to you, if love or the spirit that we have in common or any tenderness or sympathy can persuade you at all, then be united in your convictions and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind. That is the one thing that would make me completely happy. There must be no competition among you, no conceit, but everybody is to be humble. Value others over yourselves, each of you thinking of the interests of others before your own. Your attitude must be the same as that of Christ Jesus. These are the words of our tradition for our contemplation today. So about a month or two ago, Bab said to me, you want to do a dialogue sermon? I said, sure. What's a dialogue sermon? <laughs> so here we are. We're about to have a dialogue. And as we were preparing for today, we looked for a text, a scripture to ground our conversation. And after some discussion, we landed on the letter to the Philippians. Um, this is chapter two, the, the first five verses. And... Um, I love the letter to the Philippians. It's one of my most favorite parts of scripture. And that's really because 12 years ago when I was in my New Testament class, the professor, Monia Stubbs, she just broke open the words for me in a new way. And I felt like ah, this, this is the core of what church means, why we do any of what we're doing <laughs> when we come together. Um, and this letter is a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, and Paul was imprisoned in Rome when he wrote the letter. And this is a church that Paul helped to found, um, and it's a church for all of, you know, what we can tell is it's doing well. Um, there's a little bit of conflict arising, and Paul just wants to see the church continue to grow in love um, and be that manifestation of love in the world. And so Paul is writing this to encourage the Philippians to unity. Uh, yeah, and when he talks about uh, make my joy complete to be of the same mind, I think I can't even be of the same mind in one day of myself. How in the world are we yeah. going to do this as a group of people? And then as you look at that scripture, you realize that what what he's really talking about is being of the same purpose, the same intent in what we do and say, and how we live out our life. And that's a very different challenge. Uh, that's, a, a, that's a bigger challenge to me than, than just me trying to be of one mind. Yeah, we're not being asked to conform to the same thinking, the same thoughts about God even, or even to the same, to ascending to sort of truth claims. We're, we're talking about something more fundamental. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's at the core, it's really at the core of what the church should be mm -hmm. and what the church should be about because it's about doing things with a loving intention rather than doing things to make me look better or to just get a job done. It's, it's not that. It's that everything that we do contributes to making the world a better place for everyone if what we are doing is being done out of love. Right, right. It's, I mean, what, what we're trying to do is manifest love in the world with each other here as a community and then outward. And Yeah, and community is a great place to learn how to do that. Right, because, yeah, it's not just a feeling, right? It's not just like, 
um, an action, but it's really, it starts with our mind and our thinking, um, how we even view each other, how we imagine ourselves to be in relationship to others. If we form hierarchies in our mind or preconceived notions about people, it, it really starts here. And we're kind of, I think we come here to, to reset our minds because we get so many messages out in the world um, to see people this way or that way, or, you know, so, so much calling us to be better than or over mm -hmm. others. Absolutely. And, and that's, uh, that's something that is very necessary to keep us. I think community that helps us do that is very necessary to keep us on the right path uh, because I can go off on crazy rabbit trails. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, that's not what we are about. And, you know, uh, Jim Rigby even says that we really need to try to erase those thoughts that are negative mm -hmm. that we have, because even that really impacts how we act and react to our world. I mean, just watch the news or listen to the news. I mean, it's, it's easy to go really quickly to those reactions about other people. Um, I certainly find myself doing that all the time. Um, you know, Paul, you know, he sort of deepens this idea of what it means to, to be of the same mind, of the same love, to be unified as he goes along in this letter. And the next line, it's a little bit different than the translation up here, but it's do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. And I, I love this. I think and it's so beautiful. And I also think it's there's a danger in it because of the way that we hear it sometimes and also the way that certain people have been socialized to always focus on the needs of others. And I think it's not always females, but I think it's a lot of times in a patriarchal culture, females are so, like socialized to focus first on others' needs. Um, and that can be a beautiful thing. But when you focus on others so much that you neglect yourself, sometimes you lose a sense of who you are. But that, that is not what Paul is saying here, I don't think. Because um, I think, I mean, if you look at kind of that original context, um, in Rome, you know, Roman culture was focused on kind of rising the ladder to, to greater honor, to greater success, to greater political power, or at least those who could participate and vote. And, um, you know, it's always a subset, right, who can yeah. actually achieve that. But it, it's focused on kind of the self and achieving the highest end of the self in the political environment. And, and Paul's, I think, kind of trying to reverse that in what he's saying. He's like, don't focus on yourself, your success, your honor. Focus on the honor of others. Yeah. Seek their success. Um, focus solely on that. How do you see that? How do you think about that, Babs? Well, I was thinking when you were talking, and I remember back in the 60s, there was a real common uh, uh, saying that said, put God first, others second, and self last, which tends to mean self gets left out of the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think when you try to do that, sometimes you do more harm than good because you're not taking care of yourself too. Yeah. And I think Paul is asking for that kind of a balance there, that it's not rising that ladder to, to be on the top of the ladder, it's taking everybody else with you as you go up that ladder. Yeah, I think that's a really, a really good point. Um, it's, it, this only works if everyone's doing this for everybody else. It can't just be like 10 people in the church or this group of people. It has to be everybody looking out for everybody else. It's a very much a, like a mutual mindset. Um, and it's one of the um, scholars that I looked at, he was talking about, you know, rather than upward mobility, which is sort of our culture too, not just Roman culture, um, of kind of getting our kids through the best colleges so they can meet the right people to get the right job to do, I don't know what, but keep going this direction. <laughs> um, it's, it's really more of like a, for yourself or your, even your family, sort of almost like a downward mobility. But it's not just descending, it's like, like you said, like everybody rising all together yeah. because we're all focused on each other. Yeah. Yeah. 
and you know the 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 church as a community is a great place to practice that kind of stuff yeah and and part of what we have here in in uh, our structure is the agape structure which is the way our committee structure works here in the church and and that's ambassadors guardians artists pastor and education or enlightenment it could be called and when those five entities are working together then we as individuals are growing and becoming more enlightened we're becoming more uh loving hopefully that's the plan and we are becoming more uh interested in learning and growing through the diversity of our community rather than trying to make our community all like one of us mm -hmm. we want that diversity because that's where we learn and that's where we grow yeah, so we're not just putting a focus on one of those pieces right. and saying that's the most important. So saying they all work together. They're all important. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Well, the the third um, the third line in this uh, letter, or this piece of Paul's letter, says, "This is the New Revised Version. Um, Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others." And it, the Greek here is. It's scopeo, it's like really closely looking, kind of really seeing, really taking time and intention to look to the interests of others, which just really, I think, means like the qualities of others, but even more so like how, how the divine, how divine radical love is manifesting in each other's lives. It's like we're kind of like detectives for that in each other, not in a creepy way. But, you know, we're really kind of looking well, for God in others. And, well, and I, think it's, and I think it's acknowledging to others that we see that, mm -hmm. which helps us, you know, when people acknowledge that something we've done speaks out of love and is good, that helps, that helps me to do that again yeah. and to grow in that ability. And so it's, that's a part of it that's really essential, I think. And we don't do enough of that, I don't think of really acknowledging, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's some corny phrases that we hear and we, and we really don't like that, that try to address that. But I think we can find our own way of saying to people that I see the good in you. Yeah, I mean, I can even think like, as a kid, you can think a scavenger hunt for, <laughs> for the love that you see around you. Um, what, one image that's coming to me is uh, on a Thursday night. Um, we we have folks who aren't housed who come in for a meal, do laundry, um, just get kind of a nice time to relax with friends. And one of the volunteers who's really involved in that, um, I remember kind of, that we've got a laundry room back here. I don't even know if you all know, we've got washers and dryers, but I saw this volunteer here sitting on the floor with um, a person's blanket spread out before her and she was picking out the leaves and the little, you know, bits of dirt before she was washing it. And it's just this beautiful image of care. And like, look, just looking for all of those things everywhere and everyone, it, I don't know, it, it lifts you up too. Absolutely, mm -hmm. it really does. And that to me is the core of what we as a church should be. And that is expressing that radical universal love mm -hmm. that Jim talks about all the time here. And yeah, and it comes in so many different ways. And sometimes I think it can be hard to see it because of the way, because of our particular culture, anywhere we are, sort of the kind of taken for granted things about how church is done, um, like how we do our order of worship or the kind of music that we have or, you know, any of those things. Um, we you know, we really have to work to kind of what one scholar says, open ourselves to otherness. And I shared this example in the first service too. Um, one really good example of this to me, I was reading an interview a friend of mine did with a Lutheran pastor, and he's from Venezuela, and he came to the Midwest to um, help with, as an associate pastor at kind of a mainline mostly white, upper middle class church, to do a couple of uh, ministries like church plants. One was in a, a kind of an agricultural area, um, farm workers, largely from Mexico, and then another was 
um, an immigrant church in the city of you know, Central um, Latin American folks. And he said as he, he kind of went along in this, being in these two kind of different churches, that this, the mainline church, it felt like there were two different Christs. Like here was like a white Christ in a nice suit. And then in these other churches, it was the Christ wearing sandals and from the street. And it's like these two Christs didn't even know how to talk to one another. And one of the ways that that showed up is that this church, this pretty affluent church, kept getting frustrated because the people in these sort of offshoot churches didn't tithe regularly. And that's kind of the model for a church, especially in kind of the West, is that everybody tithes and we all pay a portion, um, but they weren't tithing. And, and the reason they weren't tithing is because even in their very little income that they were making, especially the farm workers, they were sending every every extra penny back to folks back home. Um, and they, this church saw that as a weakness or a, a problem, but that was really a strength. Like that was a, a radical love being enacted right there. And they could have seen that and they could have thought differently about how to share resources. And they didn't. And this pastor actually left the ministry because he was so disappointed. Yeah, yeah. And today, later today, we're going to have the opportunity to share in a baptism that will, will in part expose us to, to a completely different culture uh, because our family that's being baptized is from Cameroon and, uh, and from a Presbyterian church there, but they do baptism very differently there. And so we're going to have a celebration that is perhaps out of our comfort zone because it's not what we traditionally expect, but it's an opportunity for all of us to grow and learn and, and to be more loving to everyone, whether they're like us or not. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, every time we open ourselves up to other ways of manifesting God's love in the world, our ability to love grows, and our ability to grow as a church and be an expression of love grows. I mean, it, church is supposed to be static, right? Absolutely. I mean, we, we have these core commitments to radical love um, here to, to inclusive language, but, you know, church is supposed to grow and change with the folks who come in because we, the, the people in this room are the church. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and we need all of the diversity that we can find because that's what makes us able to be better expressions of that radical universal love to our whole human family. Yeah. And that's what we are called to be and do as individuals, I think, and also as a church. Yeah, and if we're all doing this, <laughs> if we're all looking for love in one another and encouraging that and celebrating that and supporting each other, um, then it works. It works when we're all doing that. Um, and, it, and we come here to learn how to do that, to shed all of those preconceived notions, um, to, those kind of reactions that we have toward other people um, watching the news or whatever it is. So we can train our minds to see each other differently and to see that we're all one family. Absolutely. And that's our thoughts on this. And we invite you to a moment to consider how you might handle this particular passage.